Welcome everyone. Uh, we see people entering the room. We are gonna wait one or two minutes to make sure that we are getting a full group here before we really kick off the program. But if you're coming on in, um, uh, we appreciate you being here today. We're excited to have you. Again, welcome as you're coming into the room today. Um, we've got 130 folks on so far, um, had uh, about four times that registered for the program. So we're just gonna wait just a moment. Um, hi, Michael, um, out there in Beatrice. Just as we're getting started here, um, as you're entering the room, uh, Michael used the chat to say hello. I know many Main Streeters love to use the chat to say hi welcome you to use the chat during the program. It is open for you to chat with each other. Um, I'll note though, um, as we kick off the program today, um, that we really hope for my sake at least, that you will use the Q&A box to uh, submit questions for our presenter. Um, the Q&A box is located two away to the left from the chat box. Um, so I just want to make sure that you that you know that you can use the Q and A box to submit a question because it's difficult to monitor the chat while everyone is saying hello from all the various places that you come from throughout the country. And I'm so excited for all those messages coming in. Uh, we are recording this program, um, and we anticipate the recording would be available uh, by tomorrow on Main Street America's YouTube channel. Which, if you don't follow, it's at National Main Street on YouTube. You can find lots of great content from our programs there. And just to uh, give you a little bit of background, we had a lot of interest in today's program um, and just about Main Street America, if you're not familiar with us. Uh, John, can we go to the next? Main Street America is a uh, national nonprofit organization committed to strengthening communities through preservation-based economic development in older and historic downtowns, commercial districts. Many of you know us. If you don't know us, I just want to make sure that you understand that you can you can reach out to us, follow us, visit mainstreet.org. Um, we're happy, we're happy to have you participate with us. Um, as we as we get kicked off here too, we did want to make one note and John uh from uh from HUD, who I will introduce in just a moment, will also make that note, but you know, it's important to understand that the uh, the Main Street program means one thing to members of Main Street America, and it means another thing to the Part Department of Housing and Urban Development with the Main Street program. So there is no requirement for participation with Main Street America to participate in HUD's Main Street program. And we just want to make sure to separate those two things a little bit. There's lots of uh, uh, shared values in what we're trying to achieve. But we also want to make sure that you know that there's no limitation to your participation in the program if you're not a participant with Main Street America. And now I'd really like to uh, take the next step and, and let you know also the MSA has a variety of resources, whether or not you're a member with us on uh, developing your downtown and specifically new resources on housing. So if you are a Main Street leader or a, a community development official just out looking for some general information about how to get started on housing in your community, we have two newer resources for you, again, available at MainStreet.org. We have our at home at, on Main Street report about research in Main Street communities and our guidebook for local leaders produced by our research team with input from Main Street programs across the country. Really encourage you to check those out. These resources are, again, drawing the distinction between Main Street America and the Department of Housing and Urban Development. These are MSA resources. They're not endorsed by HUD. They're not produced by HUD. But we wanted to make sure that you also knew that there were some other resources out there as you consider your, your downtown housing journey. So with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over 
to John Holtgrieve of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. We're so grateful to have John here today with us to talk about the Main Street program, HUD's Main Street program. Um, and we will have time for Q&A at the end of the program. So just once again, please drop those questions into the Q&A box. Uh, John, please take it away. Hello, um, thank you all for being here this afternoon. Uh, my name is John Holgrieve. I'm a neighborhood and community investment specialist here at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And I'm really excited to uh, be here to talk to you all about uh, HUD's Main Street program. Um, the Main Street program was spun out of uh, the old HOPE 6 program. Um, some of you who have been around for a while may remember uh, Hope Six from the '90s and the early 2000s, and um, now Main Street is funded via the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative. Um, and we, in the Main Street team, we provide competitive grants to small towns who are looking to rejuvenate older downtown business districts while retaining the area's traditional historic character. Um, mostly, this ends up being obsolete commercial uh, offices or buildings that can be reconfigured into uh, rent producing affordable housing for the community, um, though we also do new construction as well. So let's dive into that a little bit more. Um, who's actually eligible for the Main Street grant? So uh, in order to be eligible for the grant, an application must be a unit of local government. All right, what does that mean? I'm going to quote here from our uh, notice of funding availability. A unit of local government is a city, town, township, village, county, parish, or other general purpose political subdivision of a state or territory, such as Puerto Rico, Guam, the Nor Northern Mariana Islands, the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, the District of Columbia, and the trust territories of the Pacific Islands. It does not include Native American governments who apply for grants to our Office of Native American uh, programs. It doesn't include tribally designated housing entities or uh, public housing authorities, which have their own uh, sources of funding. So you had to be a unit of local government, city, town, township, village, et cetera. Um, you had to have a population of less than 50,000 people. And in your community, you have to have less than 100 public housing units. Um, now let's talk about the grants themselves. The grants are usually up to $500,000 and they can be used for the construction or rehabilitation of units. Um, the grant funds are competitive and applications are awarded through a notice of funding availability on the grants.gov website. We call the notice of funding uh, opportunity a NOFO. Uh, the NOFO governs the program. It contains everything you'll need to know about how to submit, what to submit, how we score applications, and we're going to dive into that a little bit more uh, later on. The funds can be used, and historically, excuse me, uh, we have awarded between two and four projects with each funding announcement. Um, those of you who have already seen our NOFO uh, for this year may have seen that we had $2 million available at the moment. Um, and we can go up to $1 million per grant, but usually we go up to $500,000 uh, and we're gonna try and do four grants if we can, so that we can um, have you know more communities make use of these funds. Uh, so let's talk about eligible uses uh, of these funds. So you know, those are the grants, now it's what do you do with them? Uh, that includes construction, uh, major rehab, acquisition of space, into affordable housing units, um, architectural engineering services. And then, uh, so it's essentially, it's construction financing, right? And the project uh, must include several buildings in the main street area. This goes back to what um, Kelly was talking about, you know, main street area in this case uh, may be slightly different than what gets covered as part of main street America. Um, we have our own definition in the NOFO, and we allow uh, communities to designate uh, their own Main Street area as part of the grant. Um, so, you know, with the grant comes some affordability restrictions, though 
we do try and keep the grant relatively flexible. Um, Main Street units are not public housing units, um, they, which means that they don't have to follow all of the same rules as public housing. Um, namely, uh, project units must be maintained as affordable housing um, only for the period of initial rental occupancy of the unit or the initial residence ownership of that unit. Um, after that, the units can go up to market rate. And, and you know, in this case, affordable means 80% of area median income uh, or up to 80% of area median income. To be specific, you can go below 80% if you so choose. So when is the deadline for the application? Let's uh, talk about that and talk about the application process itself. Um, the applications are due on October 12th, 2023. So you all still have a little bit of time if you haven't gotten started yet. Um, and you know we're excited about uh, this year's crop of applications and we're looking forward to if you're applying um, to you applying to the program. So the application process, as I mentioned, that all goes through grants.gov. Um, and that's a online um, website. Here you can download the application package and the instructions. It includes you know, official copies of the NOFO, which has everything that you need to know about the program and all of the necessary information uh, about how we score it. Um, and you know, one of the things, uh, you know, with anything online, make sure to take the time to familiar, familiarize yourself with the grants.gov electronic submission system prior to submitting and make sure you give yourself enough time to work your way through that. And uh, we did want to note that grants.gov has an applicant support center as well. If you have any questions, um, I believe there's a phone number and an email address too if you need technical support. Um, so Main Street grants are competitive. Uh, as you mentioned, we're looking to do between two and four of them. Um, and applications in, are, are reviewed and scored based on some criteria that's included in the NOFO. Um, there's a, a rating and review section that you can work your way down that includes each individual scoring element and what we look for in that. Um, and the application has three main components when you're putting everything together. Um, the first one is narrative exhibits. These are the first part of the application. Um, this is where you're going to respond to some key thresholds, rating factors, other criteria in the NOFO. Um, then there's some attachments. This is maps, photographs, data forms. Uh, there's different certifications that you'll have to put together. And then there's some uh, standard HUD forms as well um, that you'll have to fill out too. Um, the NOFO has a list of all these. So, uh, you know, in there, you can go and take a look, see what you're going to need to, uh, you know, submit and use that as your guide as you're trying to put everything together. Um, some tips for successful applicants. You know, some of this, uh, you know, is just kind of basic stuff, but it's really important when you're putting this all together. Um, you know, read all of the NOFA materials, uh, read all the instructions a couple times, right? For the rating factors, make sure you're re responding to each component um, and, you know, answering all the questions, provide specific details, information requested. Um, you know, your response is going to be evaluated on the specific criteria that's laid out in the NOFO. And we wrote the Main Street uh, NOFO in such a way that it lays it out, you know, you get this many points uh, for this. Um, and as you read through the NOFO, you can kind of take a look at that. Um, then, you know, you're gonna review the application and the attachments several times or avoid leaving out any important information required elements. Um, if, you know, you see it, an item that you think doesn't, you know, apply to you, make sure to, you know, answer things as best you can. Um, if something doesn't apply to you, explain why, right? Um, and we do want to caution everyone to pay careful attention to the threshold eligibility uh, requirements. That includes not only the eligibility criteria, 
that uh, we spoke out earlier, you know, you have to be a town, you have to have less than 50,000 people, you have to have less than 100 uh, public housing units. Um, you know, there's some uh, required items that need to be submitted and make sure to uh, include those with your application as well and make sure that you're uh, fully responding to all the items in the NOFO and that you meet those requirements. Um, and finally, just make sure that all your documents are signed and dated, you know, uh, dot your I's, cross your T's, just make sure that everything is well put together before uh, submitting it. And so now we're going to talk about just a couple different uh, projects that Main Street has uh, done in the past. Um, this one is Kit Carson, Colorado. It's a small town of between 250 and 300 people uh, in southeastern Colorado. And um, I wanted to highlight this one because this grant was actually submitted uh, by a volunteer. Um, and I wanted to include this so that you know, you know, the, the NOFO is long, the application looks intimidating, but this is a doable, doable application. Um, if you just take the time to, you know, put everything together, uh, I promise you, you'll be able to, you know, make something happen. And the, uh, this project is also unique in that uh, these homes here, uh, some of you may notice, these are manufactured housing. These were actually built in a factory about uh, five hours away from Kit Carson and then driven to the town and installed. Um, and they were actually able to use the Main Street funds to leverage uh, some additional funds from the state to build some additional units uh, after the fact. Um, the next one that I want to highlight here is Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Uh, this is sort of a quintessential Main Street project. Um, this was a abandoned building uh, in front of, you know, the Main Street uh, of downtown Bartlesville. And, um, you know, I do want to let everyone know this is a before picture that lovely teal facade on the start front of the building is uh, now gone. And um, they were able to renovate some units uh, on the second floor. And then um, using some other financing, they were able to open some commercial space on the first floor um, with a, a restaurant and a general store. Um, this is also a great project to highlight because this is the second project that Bartlesville, Oklahoma has done with us. They also uh, used some Main Street financing to uh, renovate a local hotel into some housing as well. Um, the next uh, project that I wanted to highlight is Batesville, Arkansas. Um, Batesville uh, likes to note that they are the oldest town in Arkansas and that this was the oldest building in the oldest town in Arkansas. Um, and it was condemned at the time that we uh, started the Main Street process. Um, in fact, there were uh, rocks and uh, bricks that were falling off the building onto the sidewalk there. Uh, and using our funds, we were able to help them uh, renovate the uh, upstairs into uh, some beautiful apartments. Uh, you can see the new windows on the building now. Um, and they were able to uh, put in some commercial space uh, on the first floor too. Um, one of the things that we wanted to highlight about this project is that um, you know they had to go through some of the historic uh, elements that can come up with Main Street um, and that we were able to navigate that uh, alongside them as they worked through uh, some of the historic requirements with their local um, state housing preservation office and the HUD field office, which performs the uh, local environmental review. Um, so that's uh, the Main Street program. Um, I'm going to uh, send things back over to uh, Kelly and we can start answering some questions. Um, if you have any specific questions that you want to ask, um, I am including my uh, email here. Uh, so, you know, you can take it down and please feel free to reach out uh, with any additional questions that we're not able to answer here on the call. 
we do have a substantial amount of time to, you know, to dig into some questions and we left that space intentionally so that we could address these. And I just want to encourage everyone as you're asking questions, um, Maggie Curran from HUD has also been on the back end addressing a lot of the questions that have come in to the Q&A panel. So you may find your, the answer to your question there uh, before you have the opportunity to ask it. So just go ahead and check um, and also drop a link to the NOFO in the chat during the presentation. So if you're like, hey, where do I find this information uh, that, that John just talked about? Um, uh, go ahead and click that link and you'll dive right in. Um, one thing I wanted to highlight is just the opportunity also through that through the NOFO and, and John talked about these elements, but the opportunity to go in and figure out the scoring, right? So this application would be scored based on criteria that are listed there. And it is it is fairly clear in the NOFO how to go through and determine whether or not you might be well scored uh, based on your based on your responses. So it does take some, some looking at, but um, just wanted to highlight that again. So we had a couple of pre-prepared questions and then I'll go to the Q&A, um, to the Q&A box. But, um, just the first one off the top, you know, um, John, how long do you think it would take? You know, you mentioned that a volunteer completed one of these applications. How long do you think it takes to put all of this information and documentation required for these folks that don't have a lot of time? You know? Yeah, you know, that's a it's a great question. Um, and, you know, I'm going to uh, give a broad answer here and just say that it can really depend. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if that's the answer that you all want to hear, but the uh it's you kind of take a look at the application. Uh, you'll see that there's some required elements there, and it's all going to depend on you know the capacity of the town, right? Um, you know, some of you it may be you know a real skeleton crew, um, you know, putting together the application, maybe one or two people, and you know, I'd give yourself some time. Uh, if you know you have a larger team, it may not take that long at all. Um, it really depends, and you're going to have to work your way down through the um, different elements. Um, I I will say I you know we really uh, want to make sure that our applicants and our grantees have a good experience, so we try and make it as simple and easy as we can, and we uh, you know hope to make it doable uh, for folks, and we want to make sure that you know it's easy to understand and that you're able to kind of address each element as it comes. And for our folks out there who are working in historic districts, which is many of our Main Street programs, you know, if the buildings are located in a district or are listed on the National Register, you know, what's your recommendation on how to work with HUD uh, on making sure that you are meeting kind of requirements to maintain that historic fabric um, and that you are doing that kind of proactively? Yeah, um, a lot of that involves, you know, um, Working with HUD, but working with your state historic preservation office and making sure that you're meeting those uh, requirements. And I think, you know, talking to the SHPO the, is really important. Um, and we also, at the same time, uh, work through the, we call it the Part 50 Environmental Review, uh, which goes uh, through the HUD field office. And so, um, you know, I know that that can be intimidating for folks, but we're here to help and we're going to uh, work through everything, you know, as you're going through, you know, the 106 process and the part 50 and getting everything together. Great. Now I'm going a little bit into the, in, some of our questions are a little bit similar in the Q&A box, so I might combine your question with others. So um, just heads up. Um, I wanted to understand a little bit more about what qualifies as a public housing unit. I think we have some questions here about what is the parameters of that relative to the downtown district? Um, and can you explain what what actually counts as a public housing union? Yes, yeah, a, a public housing unit is, um, in this case, we're gonna say it's a uh, unit with a, um, you know, a deed of restrictive covenant on it saying that it is a public housing unit. Um, and, you know, or a DOT deed of trust saying that it's a public housing unit. Um, and that's going to be, you know, something that's going to go through your local public housing authority. Um, and, you know, if you have questions about, you know, your specific community and making sure, hey, how many public housing units do we have? Um, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to your public housing authority um, or to let 
let us know and we can you know help you answer that uh question um in, in this context the public housing units you know don't include like section eight uh or voucher units um you know we're really talking about um you know we call them acc units um and so it's very specific public housing uh units and not voucher units so I would assume that if it was financed by LIHTC, it also doesn't count if a if a Section Eight doesn't count. Yeah, so uh, Section Eight or um, you know LIHTC units uh, really uh, count there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, in terms of your one hundred unit count there. Um, a, a note about LIHTC too is that uh, we have had Main Street projects with uh LIHTC units in them um and so you know sometimes folks use LIHTC uh you know in addition to the main street funds in order to make a larger project work so in terms of the count and what counts in a hundred because there's still some questions coming in about that is it a hundred within and Maggie already addressed this a little bit but is it with hundred within that downtown district or is it 100 within the the area of the unit that's applying, right? So if it's a county applying, it's across the county, or is it within the city within the county? It's it's within that um, local jurisdiction. Um, so you know it's within that unit of uh, local government. So yeah. if you're a you know town, let's say, and you are applying, it's going to be a hundred units within your town, right? So if you were a county and you were interested in this, but the county had more than 100 units, you could then work with maybe a local town to find a town that didn't have 100 units and that first, that first jurisdiction would need to be the applicant. Correct, yes. Uh, a couple of questions have come in um, around how long the units need to remain affordable. Yeah, so, um, the you know, it's an interesting thing with Main Street. There is not a... Uh, time period associated with the affordability. Instead, it stays with the uh, initial occupant uh, of the unit. So it's that first tenant um, of, you know, the apartment. Or uh, if you're doing, uh, we do have the ability to do home ownership with this. So if it's the first uh, owner of a home, uh, you'll make sure that first owner Needs that eighty percent. Um, you know, usually Main Street covers uh renters, so it'd be that first tenant, and then once they leave, the project can go market rate. Great. Now, Chris also asked if a tribal pu public housing authority counts towards that one hundred. Um. Yeah, I think you know, uh, on the tribal side, uh, tribes you know have their own source of funds that goes through the Office of Native American programs. Um, if you're in a specific community where that's, you know, a concern um, with how we overlap with the ONAP, uh, reach out to us and we'll help you navigate that and make sure that you're, um, you know, either good to go or if it's better to go for an ONAP grant. Awesome. And a, qu a qu question that came in and a question that I've also noticed um, about matching for this, right? If you're an applicant, what do you need to provide in terms of leverage? And I know the application also discusses specifically project leverage and area leverage. I wonder if you could discuss that. Yeah, so the uh, the project leverage is, um, we have a, a match requirement and the project leverage is just uh, providing a percentage match of the funds that you're receiving from Main Street. Um, and so that one should, you know, hopefully that's uh, kind of self-explanatory. It goes along with most, um, you know, federal grant programs and some sort of matching included there. Um, for the area leverage, uh, one of the things about Main Street is that we look for how does the project interact with the community? Are there other revitalization uh, efforts going on, right? And so uh, one of the uh, items that you get scored on is your area leverage, where you have the opportunity to discuss any other projects that are going on in the area. Um, 
you know, hey, we just did this other project down the street, um, you know, that kind of thing to uh, let us know that this these funds are going to go to a broader redevelopment effort, um, you know, outside of just the one uh, building that we might be renovating. Thank you for that. Just I wanted to understand a little bit more because we have a few questions here about ownership, right? Does the does the city have to own the buildings that this grant is being applied for? And if not, how how does the structure work with them working with privately owned buildings? Um, does it have to be publicly owned and then return to private ownership? Does there need to be a change in ownership? There does not need to be a change of ownership. Um, and the um, the applicant does not need to own uh, the building. Um, the city, you know, uh, or the unit of local government um, is our grantee. And, you know, they're responsible for managing the grant and everything that goes along with that. Uh, but they don't need, the building does not need to be publicly owned. Uh, the building can be privately owned and then receive the grants from the, um, from the unit of local government. So uh, how many projects are going to be awarded through this this year or your best guess? You know, I know folks are uh, excited about the fact that this year's NOFO has uh, $2 million and we do have the ability to go uh, up to $1 million per grant. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, our hope really is to do uh, four grants of up to $500,000 each and try and reach as many uh, different communities as we can. Thank you. And um, there was another question here, and it's come up a couple of times about just clarifying um, the eligibility um, of a public housing authority or a city that has a public housing authority. Um, specifically, Michael out in Nebraska said, we have a local housing authority office, but I see on page 20, Michael's paying attention, that it says to be eligible, the local government must not be served by a local or county public housing agency. Is authority and agency the th same thing? And could we just dive in there a little bit more? Yeah, um, the uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a great question, and thank you for asking it. Um, you know, okay, let's look at this in a couple different ways here. One is uh, the city would need to be the one to apply for the grant, right? Um, so that's you know the first thing there, not the public housing authority or public housing agency. Um, you know, whether it's a housing authority, housing agency, housing commission, um, whatever they, you know, chose to call themselves, um, you know, they have to have less than 100, um, you know, we call them uh, public housing units, section nine units, ACC, fair cloth. They're all kind of getting at the same type of unit there. And uh, there needs to be less than 100 in your community. So if you have a specific question about, you know, your local housing authority, how many public housing units they have, uh, reach out to them and then uh, see what their answer is and reach out to us as well and we can help you navigate that. Excellent. So there was another, um, uh, someone dropped a comment here, not be served by a county parish or public housing agency. It doesn't really come in the form of a question, so I apologize if that's still unclear to anybody. Um, please re-ask uh, re the the question. Um, and. Uh, Jeffrey out in Colorado, or about the Colorado example asked, it looked like those housing units were not downtown. And the picture was, um, you know, it looked like housing in an open space. What is the proximity requirement to the commercial district, right? Um, I, you know, we can't tell from there. How close was this? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great question. So Kit, let's say Kit Carson is small. Um, it's, you know, less than 300 people. Um, this there it's not very dense um at all and this actually if you turned around from here you could see they have a brand new uh school that is you know right down the way this is um surprisingly as close to a downtown um as you're going to get there it's just hard to tell um from that photo um we mentioned that we allow you know cities to designate their own main street area um, and that's discussed a little bit in the NOFO. Um, there's a little bit of a definition in there, and we encourage folks to take a look at uh, what's in the NOFO as far as the definition of a main street area, and then kind of work within that definition to make sure that you're 
meeting all the requirements that we have there. Excellent. So I just want to acknowledge um, there's a comment here, are nonprofits eligible? I think we've covered it a couple of times. Um, I'll say it and then John can tell me if I'm correct. A unit of local government must be the applicant. Yes, that is correct. So um, if this is something that you are interested in, please, you know, work with your local government to make it happen. Great. And as we kind of um, go through the go through the um, the final remaining questions here, if there's any other questions, now's a great time to send them in. We only have four unanswered questions left. I also want to acknowledge Maggie's been getting through some of them. So if you did have a question, there's a lot in the Q&A section. Um, but just to continue the conversation, would a village within a county that has a PHA with at least 100 PHU be eligible if there are no PHU within the village itself? That That's a great question. Um, I would look at the way, uh, you know, go beyond this um, presentation here and look at the way that the NOFO is written and, you know, um, make sure to kind of check that. Um, I don't want to give, you know, a direct answer on your specific situation um, here on the webinar um, at the risk of, you know, putting my foot in my mouth. But um, if you have a specific situation that you have questions about, um, please, you know, reach out to us and we'll uh, let you know. Okay, and I think Chris, uh, that was Christine's question, and I think Matthew's question is very similar. He says, my municipality resides in a county that has a housing authority agency. Is my municipality eligible to apply for this program? So you can live in a community that has a public housing agency authority, uh, et cetera. Um, it's just that that uh, PHA cannot have more than 100 public housing units. Um, you know, there are some PHAs that has, you know, gone all voucher or uh, they've gone, you know, with the rental assistance demonstration, RAD. Um, so it really depends. Um, and so I, you know, it, a, having a public housing authority does not, you know, necessarily mean, hey, you're not, um, you're not eligible. It just means that you need to make sure that they have less than 100 public housing units. Great. Great. So I think there is some clarity that folks are seeing needed there. And I think the best thing to do would be to take a first step by contacting your public housing unit in your city if you're not the city, and then talking to John or a member, another member of his team to get clarity, right? Because um, the best answer is always going to come from the folks that are managing this. Um, Maggie has been ardently answering questions there. So I see her answering one right now about how much time does a city have to commit to manage the grant? And we haven't been able to apply for grants because the city does not have the capacity to manage them. And I know that capacity concerns are really huge out there for everyone with all the federal funding that's available. Um, do you have a sense, John, of how, how other communities have managed the grants and managed their time? You know, this is another case where I'm going to say it depends. <laughs> um, and the the reason that I'm going to say that is it, um, you know, it matters how um, how actively involved the city is in the process, what their role uh, is, if it's a building that the city owns versus a building that's privately owned, what's the capacity of the developer. Um, and so every, you know, uh, different city or town goes about it in their own way. And uh, we try and, you know, make it as easy for folks as possible. Um, and, you know, we we do do regular check-ins uh, like any project. And, you know, we do ask for, you know, some level of documentation um, depending on the stage of the project in and what we're looking at. But really we want to partner with you and we want to make sure that we're working together to make this project happen. I think that's something that all the folks on the Main Street team are uh, very dedicated to. And, you know, uh, we understand the, um, the burden that, you know, grants can put on a, um, you know, understaffed uh, community office. And we want to make sure that we're here to help as you uh, kind of navigate the whole uh, process of, you know, revitalizing your downtown area. Thank you, John. 
Um, there's a question that came into the chat box. Can it be new housing in the downturn or does it have to be existing? It can't. So the Main Street funds, can it be new construction? Um, for example, uh, I'm gonna navigate back to the Kit Carson slide here. Um, you know, this project here, this was um, a new construction um, project. Uh, Bartlesville, on the other hand, that's a uh, renovation. As I mentioned that, you know, Teal Facade is no longer there. Uh, and Batesville was a renovation as well. Um, but we do uh, fund new construction housing um, in addition to renovations. Great. Um, and I just want to flag back um, to a question that was asked by my colleague, Gail. She asked how many or many communities do not have a public housing authority, the small communities that we're targeting through this program. What would be the next steps or their first steps to define public housing units if they don't know where to start? Yeah, um, if uh, they don't have the public housing authority, um, you know, they may not have public housing units. Um, and so I think, you know, uh, public housing units are specifically, you know, financed through HUD. And um, so I think, you know, that should hopefully not be too big of an issue. Um, but, you know, if it is a concern in your community, you know, we encourage you to reach out and we'll, um, you know, be able to help you with that. And I think, um, Adrian, uh, you might have been asking a question there, but it got um, maybe chopped off a little bit. Um, uh, so if you want to um, fill that in, Maggie did a fantastic job throughout this conversation of answering questions. There are a couple more open here. Um, why less than 100 uh, housing units to qualify? Um, yeah, I mean, uh... I think, you know, one of the things with this program is we specifically want to target, you know, smaller communities. And it that's one of the metrics that we use uh, to do that. Um, I also uh, want to take a moment here to shout out Maggie for the great work she's been doing, uh, addressing everything in the chat. And uh, so thank you uh, for doing that as we've kind of worked our way through these questions. Absolutely. We did have over, over 40 questions asked in the Q&A box. So good job, everyone, asking your questions in the Q&A box also. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Antoinette says, my city doesn't have a housing authority. Can the city or the community redevelopment agency go after these grants? And I think we'll, we've said a couple of times that the city is the one that has to go after the grant, um, the city or the uh, local government unit. Yeah, um, the, uh, you know, the legislative intent was that we didn't want this, uh, you know, program to compete with public housing authority funds, right? They they have their own way of getting financing. Uh, this is this grant is specific to um, units of local government with, uh, you know, less, less than hundred uh, public housing units, but really, it's less than fifty thousand people is the. Uh, big item there. And, you know, what we're really looking to is uh, to help revitalize small communities. Wonderful. Um, Meg, you marked Adrian's question as answered, but I'm going to go back to it just to um, just to make sure. He says, uh, Adrian said that the notice on page 20 says, is served by a single PHA that administers more than 100 physical public housing units within the local government's jurisdiction. Such units exclude Section 8 uh, voucher subsidized units. And I guess there's some confusion about page 20. It's been brought up a couple of times. It says either more than, but it is less than, yes? Yeah, it, it's less than. Yeah, I think there might be a not like a couple of paragraphs up <laughs> that might be hard to see. Hopefully there is. If not, we'll we'll take a look at that. But it is uh, less than 100 uh, public housing units. Great. And with all of our questions out of the Q&A box for the moment, um, I want to note um, Chris Wilson is present in the chat. He's a Main Street America board member and has been a recipient of this grant. He has entered his email address should anyone want to reach out to Chris to discuss the grant program because uh, Bartlesville was featured here as a recipient of a couple of 
Um, and actually all the examples that John gave are communities that some way participate with the Main Street program. And so we're pleased that that, um, that, that has been helpful to our communities. The other thing that was mentioned in the uh, Q&A that M Maggie uh, snapped up a couple of times was, I don't have time to apply for this round of grant. You know, can I apply in the future? Um, and I just want to call that out as yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, we we hope you do. We really do. Wonderful. So um, we have um, more time dedicated to this, but we have moved through the program. We've shown you the NOFO. We've gone through the questions. We hope this was super informative to you. Um, John has his contact information here, and I would suggest if you're considering applying, take it down, even if you're not sure, so that you can follow up with him. This recording will be made available on Main Street America's YouTube page so that you can go back and kind of review again. And if there are continuing questions, I'm also I know happy to help support in any way that Main Street America can. Um, John, do you have any kind of concluding thoughts or words or things that you've heard from the questions here to help encourage and influence um, all of our participants to go out there and create some housing? Yeah, um, you know, first I wanna uh, thank you, Kelly, for uh, putting this NOFO together, or not the NOFO, but putting this uh, presentation together, we put the NOFO together. Um, you know, I, I think it's been uh, really great to be able to take some time to talk about the program uh, with all of you here. Um, we really do encourage you to uh, take a look at NOVO, see if you're, it's right for your community and to apply. Um, I think great program and we hope it can really uh, do some good in your community. Um, I also wanna shout out my colleague, uh, Maggie Kern, who has done a great job um, responding to uh, everything in the chat, as well as um, my colleague, Kurt James and my colleague, LaShawn uh, Pigney, who have been uh, chatting uh, behind the scenes here during the uh, process, um, you know, and have worked on this um, Main Street program for a long time and are really the beating heart of this program. So, um, you know, we wouldn't have it without all of them. And um, I really just want to encourage folks to um, take the time to, you know, read the NOFO, see if it's right for you and um, apply. It, we have seen this uh, program do a lot of good and we hope that uh, we're able to continue to do that over time. Thank wow, you. Wow, we had more questions come in while you were talking. Okay, let's let's do it. Gail says these are her two final questions. I love you, Gail. Um, how many applicants did you receive in previous opportunity and will this be offered in the future? And I know that's something that's a little bit uh, always difficult to fully answer, right? Yeah, um, some of the information about past um, competitions is available uh, on our website. Um, and, you know, as far as uh, the future, you know, um, we're you know, really focused on getting through this uh, NOFO cycle, but we hope that, you know, this program is around for a long time and that folks have the ability to um, continue to apply and, you know, use these funds to make their communities. Great. And uh, Pamela asked if these funds can be used alongside historic tax credits. A great question for our communities. That That's a great question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, yes, these have been used alongside with um, historic tax credits. They've been used alongside low-income housing tax credits um, and, you know, other sources of, you know, funding. Main Street is the only source that goes into a project. Usually um, it's existing alongside other sources. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have once again gone through all the questions. And at this moment, I'm going to just place one more time the main website for this year's uh, NOFO in the chat. Um, if you haven't yet visited that website, we will also send it out to you in a follow-up email. We want to make sure that you check there for other resources. There is an FAQ document there. I want to once again thank John and the entire HUD team that worked with us to bring this presentation to you. And I want to conclude our program. Thank you all so much for taking time to be here with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>